here's the start of day one. I already had a workbench set up in my office. As you can see, it was pretty disorganized. There I am organizing all the parts to be put up and determining what products I'm actually going to keep, what I actually need to keep. All of that is just miscellaneous parts from small projects I've worked on. As you can see to the left is my audio setup with my mixer and my music instruments. That's now relocated on the other side of the room. I put up my function generator and my two oscilloscopes. They're not planned at this time to be put back on the test bench. I have a portable rack that I'm building that will house both of the oscilloscopes, my function generator, and I have a Hewlett Packard 3478A digital multimeter and various other test equipment as well as my computer, some guitar pedals. I also got a couple rack drawers that I'll use for storing parts, components, and other miscellaneous stuff. I'll try to get a picture of that and put it in the video. If not, I'm sure it'll show up in a later video. Here I am taking measurements of the wall to make sure that I get the proper sizes of shelf. My long-term plan is to get a digital oscilloscope, possibly like a Rigol DS2000 series. It doesn't have the depth that the analog oscilloscopes do, so it doesn't take as much space and I'll be able to fit it on these smaller shelves that I have. The desk that I have is a Middle Atlantic. I believe it's an MD48 uh, corner desk without the meter bridge. And I'm not 100% sure where the studs are at and couldn't find my stud finder. So I'm using a piece of wire with a 90 degree bend on it to find the studs, which took a little time. Here's the start of day two. I bought the hardware from Home Depot. I went with uh, white mounting brackets, white shelves, and all the accessories were white in order not to absorb as much light for the videos that I plan on doing. I just randomly picked a stud here and I'm using my level to make sure that it's uh, level left to right. I just randomly picked the height based on my desk height. Getting the arms in these brackets that are mounted to the wall were kind of tough. That's why you'll see a couple times I'm actually hammering them in. This is how I got them level. I just used a straight bar and put two of the arms, the support arms, at the same height on the mounting brackets to the wall and then uh, leveled it up and down and then used that to mount my other brackets. I was one short so I ended up having to go back to Home Depot to get another one. For some reason I thought three was going to work but as you can see even if I installed the vertical brackets on each end it still would leave a 32 inch gap and the amount of equipment I plan on putting on this would probably make the shelf start to sag. Here I am taking off all the stickers that are on the arms. I guess in hindsight the black screws really stick out, but hopefully they'll just be covered up by equipment and shelves. So it looks a little strange without that bracket on the far right. Trying to see how it looks from the camera's perspective, which will pretty much be this angle that it's at right now will pretty much be the angle that I use to do the intros and outros to my videos. just based where the stud was I mounted the fourth bracket and you can see what I ran into the shelf is too short which is just a nice way of saying I should have measured the shelf width and then installed the bracket and the other thing is that a 48 inch shelf is not 48 inches 
It's actually about 47 and 13 sixteenths or 7 eighths. So keep that in mind if you decide to install something similar. Measure twice, cut once, which I need to learn. And here's me trying to figure out some redneck solution by bending the arms as opposed to doing it right and just moving the bracket over and using an alternative anchor system as opposed to going directly into the stud, which is what I did. I thought I might put the monitor on one of the shelves. I ended up coming up with another setup, which is to put it at the level of the desk underneath the shelf by making a small stand that fits behind the desk in the corner. I don't actually show a good shot of it, but it is at the end of the video. But if you'll imagine, I just took some inch and a half or two inch square tube, welded it in a V shape to where it would fit in the corner, took some scrap flat plate, welded it on top for a surface for the monitor to mount on. It looks pretty ugly, but it gets the job done. It definitely saves me some shelf space slash desk space. Although now that I've used it several times, uh, the right part of the screen is actually cut off a little bit and it doesn't seem to bother me all that much mainly because I'm not surfing the internet or on it or anything I'm just using it uh, to look something up real quick or using it as a monitor when I'm doing overhead shots of stuff that I've got on my bench out of all the portable digital multimeters that I got there's probably only about four or five that I use on a regular basis on the bench I do have a couple in my garage that I use regularly for automotive type stuff, but there's only a few of these that get used on a regular basis. I primarily use my Fluke 45 as my go-to digital multimeter. If I need data logging, which sometimes I do if I'm testing something overnight, I'll use the Fluke 289. If I'm testing electronics, I'll go to the Fluke 289 again or an 87.5. One of my favorites, which a lot of people don't know about or use, is a Tektronix TX3. They're very, very cheap, very accurate, very durable, high resolution, and some cool startup features like being able to tell you your battery voltage. Granted, it's discontinued and we're talking about used pricing, but it's not uncommon to find these for less than 100 bucks. So enough about that multimeter. As you can see, I've got my soldering iron, my triple output DC power supply, my 13.8 volt 30 amp DC power supply, my glue gun and a couple other meters. Someone needs a haircut. Here's the start of day three and it's time to move all the audio equipment out of the way. If you're interested in seeing my audio video desk, please let me know in the comments below and I'll get to that in one of the next videos. I decided to drill a couple of holes in the shelves so I could pass wires through it. I used a hole saw kit and some of the hole covers that you use for passing wire through. This is probably not an inside job, but I used my vacuum cleaner to try to suck up some of the dust as I was drilling. It turned out to be pretty easy, but I'd recommend doing this outside if you got to do it. And I would probably recommend doing this on all the shelves, possibly in more than one location. Seems like every time I turn around, I'd I need to run a wire from one shelf to the next to the next. I'm using painter's tape around the hole covers to make them fit tighter. So as I'm feeding wire through it, it doesn't accidentally pop out. After I got the arms mounted exactly where I wanted them, I used a rubber mallet to tap them in place. Some of them fit tighter than the others, and this just ensures that the shelf is level. This is a trip light, 120 volt, 20 amp power conditioner. It's got eight outlets on the back and two on the front. This is a little cable management from one shelf to the next. I did find that the gap in between the back of the shelves and the brackets that they're mounted to is about a half an inch. So you can feed some cables behind the shelves without them getting in the way. So if you don't have the opportunity to drill holes, this is another solution but don't expect to get a power cord behind there without having to actually lift the shelf up, run the cable behind the shelf, and then put it back. There's just not enough room to get a 110 volt grounded power cord behind there. I thought drilling the holes in the shelf was such a good idea, I decided to do it in my desk as well. I used painter's tape on the desk to prevent it from chipping. My hole saw wasn't deep enough, so I had to drill it from the top 
and then drill it through the bottom, matching up the pilot hole as I went. Again, drilling the holes is an outside job. I got this hole saw kit at Home Depot, as well as the plastic cable covers. The one on the bottom right hand side of your screen, which I'm doing now, turned out to be real helpful. I pulled all the wires for my computer, the power cord for the power conditioner, and a couple other things through it, and it keeps it nice and clean. I probably should have done one in the middle of the desk, but since there's a gap in the corner, it's pretty much not necessary. I'm using one of these less expensive ESD mats, mainly because it's white. If you are putting together a little electronics test bench like I am here, keep in mind that typically these white mats are less expensive, less durable, are easily burnt, and overall have a shorter lifespan than the blue ones. You can see the Panavice vise I have here. I'd highly recommend you getting one of these. It's great third hand. The white box in the middle is my Yamaha Audiogram 3 audio interface. After I got the trip light plugged into mains, I double checked my incoming voltage, my ground, and made sure we were running at 60 hertz. And everything turned out all good, so I started plugging stuff in. There's nothing special about the computer that I use for my test rig. The main thing for me is that it has to have a serial port. It's been a while since I've used this computer, so I went ahead and did a fresh install of Windows Vista. Never really had any complaints about Vista. It's fine for what this computer's used for. Time to get my cleaning on. Day four's in the house. I was having a problem doing a Windows update, so it took longer than it should have to get this done. On to day five. It took me about three full days to get Windows installed and all the updates completed, but it finally got done. Nothing wrong with a little Chick-fil-A in the morning. At some point in time, I have to apologize for the saggy pants and the plumber's crack every once in a while. Hopefully, I'll still get an NC-17 rating. Day six. Here's a tool organizer that I got for my hand tools. I bought this at Fry's Electronics. I use this for screwdrivers, nut drivers, scissors, magnifying glass, just basically all the small stuff that doesn't have a home. In one of my upcoming videos, I'll go through all the stuff that I actually use and what I use it for. Thanks for watching.